Okay, so today we're going to go over um, the derivative rules for other basic trig functions. So um, just like I have told you with um, the derivative of sine of x or the derivative of cosine of x, um, try to memorize what the first derivative is for each of those. Um, you do not have to derive it. I did do the derivation for when y is equal to the sine of x. Um, however, there is a derivation for all of them. So if you want, you can look online for that. Today, I'm just asking for you to make sure that you memorize uh, the derivatives for the other basic trig functions. For example, when you have y equals tangent of x, or cosecant of x, or secant of x, or cotangent of x. So the derivative of tangent of x is secant squared of x. Okay, um, that is commonly used, so you will probably end up with a lot of practice with that one. Now, the other ones are not as common, but they are seen or used throughout the AP exam. So again, these are things that you do uh, need to memorize. And as I said, it does become easier as you do more problems with them. So the derivative of cosecant of x is negative cosecant x times cotangent of x. The derivative of secant of x is just secant of x tangent of x. And the derivative of cotangent of x is negative cosecant squared of x. So make sure that you copy these down into your notebooks, and sometimes even not just doing the problems, writing them down each time that you see a group of trig functions to take its derivative of. Um, you may need to find some scrap area. Don't write that on your exam. You should know this from prior classes and other exams. Um, as your work, what I'm doing right here is just scrap. It's for myself. If you label it as scrap or you just cross it out when you're done, then it does not get counted for um, credit. Because this is really just a way of uh, when I was younger to kind of write out the derivatives and memorize them. But again, this is not the proper way to write anything in mathematics. So if this is something that you are writing at the top of your paper or within your test paper, especially for the AP exam, label it as scrap or cross it out. Make sure that they're not going to grade it because I have had experience where um, AP readers will grade um, what they read from your paper if it's not crossed off. And if it doesn't make sense, they'll think that you didn't understand the problem or you don't understand what's going on and you will get penalized for it, so be careful. Okay, so I probably made that heads up several times and I just wanna move on to the example problems that are not too bad. So example one. It says, find the equation for the lines that are tangent to the graph of f of x equals tangent of x over x at x equals 2. So if we need the lines that are tangent, then I need f prime of x. And this is a fraction, so I need the quotient rule. So bottom, derivative of the top, minus top. Remember, that's got to stay together, the angle and the trig function times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Okay, so the derivative of the top um, would be the derivative of tan of x, which is secant squared of x. So now we can actually at this point plug into for x and see what we get. And we obviously get something where you're gonna need the graphing calculator to come in handy because this is not an exact value, okay? So this would be like a non-calculator question. So let me see what we get. So in our final answer, we need the slope of our tangent line to be to three decimal places. So this is the slope of our tangent line to three decimal places. 
So I'm going to use point slope form, put that in, and the 2. And then I have to do y minus f of 2. Okay. So once again, I kind of need the graphing calculator here, tangent of 2 over 2. And to four decimal places, I get negative 1.09. Actually, we just need the three again because we need it for our final answer. So um, let me plug that in. Actually, this was already plugged in. So if you want, you can kind of already start adding over the um, 1.093. Okay, actually it was negative. You're adding the negative for 1.093. All right, so this is actually not an exact equation, but in the AP exam, they want the equation to be equals once you get it down to three decimal places. And this is what we get. Okay, um, so that's example one. Let's take a look at example two. Okay, remember to copy the problem work and answer so you have it in your notebooks. You can use it to study and practice from. So now let's do example two. It says, y, find y double prime if y equals secant of x. This is also another popular one. Um, so secant of x is secant of x tangent of x for its derivatives. So that's what I'm going to write for y prime. Now, they're not asking for y prime, they're asking for y double prime. So this is a good practice to do the product rule because you have two things that are being multiplied together. So first, derivative of the second, which we already did in the last example, okay, is secant squared of x, plus second, derivative of the first. Okay, so now the derivative of secant of x is secant of x tan of x, actually set over here. And we just need to polish this up, kind of simplify it. So y double prime is going to be secant of x to the third power. This is how we'd write that. And the next term is actually secant of x tangent squared of x. Okay. Um, we can leave it like this. Maybe if there was an extension of this problem, we need to see this is acceleration, it needs to be zero, we can factor out a secant of x, but we don't need to factor anything out. There's no other application to this. So there we have it. Um, let's continue to practice and good luck.